Hey guys, I'm always wanting you to try something different on SMG4. Now, I'm gonna be telling you guys about myself just like other people have been doing. Why you ask? Well, first of all, I don't think you guys know much about me besides uh, memes and I like to say ass a lot. Uh, I mean, for an online profile, that's pretty good, but I don't think that's enough for a guy that has a huge community following him. I really want to connect more with you guys, and that's why I wanted to make something like this, you know? So, without further ado, it's story time. Story time! It's story time! Please don't call the police. Games are a god's gift to man, you know? Ever wanted to catch cute fluffy animals all day, go on really epic adventures, or pay your loans to your landlord or something? Games let you do that. I will always have a place for games in my heart because they will let you be immersed in all these smexy worlds. And of course, as you know, I was a big fan of this thick boy over here and the mad lads behind him. Now I grew up working at my parents' shop every day after school with my big bro, Kevin. Mom and dad owned a food shop. So yeah, I was one of those cool kids in school that had an apple in his lunchbox, oh yeah. Not really, I didn't even need them. I'm sorry, Dad and Mom. But anyway, my parents had a little N64 within this grungy back area of a shop, and I spent many days with my older brother, Kevin, living off this magical machine. We played Mario Party, Mario 64, Paper Mario, Mario Kart. I think you're seeing a pattern here. They were all amazing, except for this. Welcome to Chance Time! No! Seriously though, why did Nintendo create Chance Time? For context, it gives a chance for the last place to come to first place all of a sudden. It's like, uh oh, you know the guy's about to lose. Let's just forget all the progress that all the other players made yeah. and just push this guy to first because he sucks and I feel bad. Now that you think about it, a lot of those N64 games were the foundation of why I'm so scared of literally everything. If you've watched my Hobo Bros channel where I play games with Kevin and react to memes, I get scared of anything. For example, we play this stupid stupid FNAF parody with dumbass memes. And you can see how that turned out. <laughs> the N64 graphics just had a really ominous feel to it, so you can understand why I was scared. I think the number one candidate to blame for all this is this. Oh, this little eel. Oh, he's a bit of a, a bit of a scary boy. I mean, look at the teeth on that thing. Literally, if I had to go into Jolly Rogers Bay, I'd just stay at the beach and just chill there. Probably just live there forever because I was too scared to go in the water. There were other things too, like that stupid fish that eats you within Yoshi's story and that shark from Banjo Kazooie that eats you when you go in the water. If I find myself falling off a platform and landing in the ocean, I pretty much just turn off the game and just leave and cry. I think you're seeing a theme of underwater creatures. Yeah, I do not like that at all. Anything just chasing me scares me in general, really. Like Minecraft. Are you? I don't know where I am. I want to go home. There were other things that didn't really make sense of why I was scared, but I was scared of it anyway. Like in Mario Party 2, there's this mini game where all the characters are just floating heads and you have to pretty much do a Simon Says type of thing. I was horrified of these things. I thought it was the end of the world. Whenever the mini game came on, I no, would just no, leave no. the back of the shop and just wait outside for like 10 minutes just to make sure that the mini game's definitely over. And then I go back inside. And then I realized my brother loaded up the mini game again. Thanks, Kevin. But really, it was those N64 games mixed with the bad smell of food and a loud ass freezer that went that molded my love for Nintendo. Now that's not to say I played other games too. We had a PS2 with a lot of pirated games, such as Simpsons Hidden Run and Crash Bandicoot. Oh boy, they were classic. I just wish they weren't uh, broken half the time. We weren't really good at taking care of those. We also had a PC, which we played enormous amount of Flash games, all due to Kevin and his passion for making crappy ass Flash games. Sorry Kevin, I love you. Now getting into my teen years, I started playing more PC games, and still a handful of Nintendo games as well. Now I'm going to admit, I may have been a bit of a pirating boy back when the DS came out, but hey, that was only because my mom would give me the death stay if I were to even consider buying more than one game within half a year. So it was either Nintendogs for the rest of my life, or getting some of that booty. Speaking of booty, Bidoof is a thick ass Pokemon. Pokemon Diamond was the jam for me. I may sound like an old man, but Diamond is unforgettable in terms of nostalgia, the music, the story, and Bidoof's ass. That second gym leader can go suck a big fat PP though. Why you ask? I always pick water starters for every single Pokemon game. Why? Because I like the color blue. Blue is associated with water, and for some reason, I always called them Flame Man. Yeah, you know what? Kid Luke wasn't that smart, alright? Kid Luke also thought he could pirate Pokemon games when they were just only first announced. Boy, was that a lot of viruses I got! Saw some interesting ads pop up on my computer. Yep. Also, I was one of those special kids who just trained one single Pokemon because I didn't know how to balance out a party. 10 out of 10 trainer, guys. Going to my later years of high school, I had less time to play console games, unfortunately. But my friends kept telling me to play this awesome game on the PC. 
Ah uh, yes, TF2. The team-based shooter game that was colorful yet violent. So much money was spent on hats. Hats for God's sake. Totally worth it if you ask me. Can't say the same for my bank account though. Now let it be known, I suck at video games. Yeah, I know. That's why I hanged out on the Mario Kart servers in TF2, where you can just chill out and focus on getting cheap kills and feel good about yourself. So many hours are spent there. How many hours do we have anyway? Oh, damn, almost 3,000. That's pretty good. How much do I have in GMOD? Oh, well. Uh, Alright then. From there, I just played this one game mode called Versus Saxon Hale. It's pretty much where a whole server versus one naked Australian dude. Um, sounds pretty fun, right? It was a boss mode, and I just loved the heck out of it. I haven't played much other FPS games now that I think about it, like COD or Battlefield. The desaturated look of the game just isn't my type. I'm more into like colorful games. And this was also the time when I was introduced to Gary's mod. When I was younger, I was like, whoa! You can do all these things? You can be Kermit, you can be Mario, you can make two dolls love each other. Oh boy. I swear I didn't do that. You can see from there how I used it for SMG4. Now when it comes to mic chat, or just talking to people on the internet in general, I am a big, big scaredy cat. Think of me as a giant Snorlax with a sign saying, Please don't hurt me. Well, I just want to love. I just can't stand the thought of a stranger getting angry at me on the internet. I know, it's pathetic. There was this game called Maple Story, which was a giant MMORPG. Um, and you could roam around different servers with friends, and there were 30 different channels within a server. And whenever anyone would join my channel, I would instantly find another channel with no one in it because I just... I can't talk to people. How do you talk to people? Will you be my friend? <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm a bit better now, but still. Talking to people is scary. I really love story and puzzle games. One of my all-time favorites is Phoenix Fight, because I just, I just love the detective stories, and also spamming objection even though I get it wrong like 90% of the time. Another game is Danganronpa, which is another one of my all-time favorites. Probably the only franchise where I bought merchandise off, actually. Look, I even cosplayed as a stupid-ass bear, okay? Hopefully no pictures exist. Oh boy. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. I really would love to know what you guys like. Also, just please don't give me JRPGs, because I just can't micro manage a party. Can't even manage a Pokemon party for God's sakes. Fortunately, as time went on, I got busier with YouTube. Schools, exams, and such. I was able to play a couple of really good games like Cuphead and Hadn't Time recently, but currently now, as of 2019, I'm just playing TF2 for like once every two months. And some Smash Ultimate on the side if, like, anyone would ever want to play with me. I'm looking for more games to play, like I'm trying to better myself. Work less, as you come to know me, I work every day. Like, 7 a.m. all the way to 12 at night. So, as of recent years, games hasn't been what I've been focused on in terms of leisure time. Now don't get me wrong, I still love to study and learn what's going on in the gaming industry and the culture. Hell, I have to deal with this red idiot 99% of my time, so it hasn't left at all. I just wish I could sit back and enjoy those times where I had nothing to do, except throw banana pills, go on adventures, and gambling with Luigi. Seriously though. If there is any message to take away from this video, it's that cherish the time you have with these video games. One day you'll just realize you won't have time to play these games anymore. Or that it's offered all it can for you. Anyway, I've been speaking for long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed my rambling. If you want to listen to me more, then, you know, just comment below and let me know what you think. And hopefully you learn a little bit more about me. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya!